on this one, we need the slope and the initial value of this one. The initial value is actually the y-intercept, which equation is given right here, all right? Uh, but you do need to find the slope, which you'd use the table with, for, for with, okay? Uh, so we don't really need to worry about this one as linear or not, just need to find the rate of change. All right, Seth said he could do it. Okay. Plus eight. I think. Yep, that's plus eight. Plus four. Plus six. Do you have a brain? Whoopsies. How do I go back? I messed up though. <laughs> no, it's not. It's to 64. No, it's not. It's to Bam. Nailed it. He has a weapon. And the color. That's the color. <laughs> you can do the rest. Thank you. All right. Uh, just real quick, Seb, so he's doing a very good job. Uh, this is an eight. That's a three. There you go. Good job. Okay, so what is the rate of change? Well, we're just going to take these and divide them by each other. So eight divided by two, bam, four. Slope. Slopage equals four. Y intercept, so we'll use this top one because it's fairly easy, okay? So you're going to take your Y intercept, which is equal to 36 minus sloppage, which is 4, times the X value, which is 5. So 36 minus 20, 16. Well, that's not the Y intercept, okay? Because uh, it needs to be a coordinate pair, so it's 0, 16. There's your two answers. Well, thank you, Seth. Let us find some sloppage. So since it it's not asked, did it ask if it's linear? No, so it's linear, okay? So all we need to do is find some sloppage. So from negative 30 to negative 10, it went up 20. And from negative 3 to negative 1, it went to the right 2. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. That's your sloppage, okay? So... When you write this, okay, so it's always f of x equals the slope times x plus the y-intercept. Uh, so you need to find the y-intercept as well. That's true. Let's look at the y-intercept. Uh, so the y-intercept is equal to your y-value minus some sloppage times x value. Okay. So let's look. Well, which one do we want to use? really doesn't matter. Let's use this one. Okay? So our y value is negative 10 minus some slop, which is 20, times negative 1. So you get negative 10 plus 20. Uh, 10, yes. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, yeah, 10. That's a 10. Thank you. So that's a 10. Plus, negative 10 plus 10 is 0. Thank you, Grant. So when I write this out, you got your f of x equals some sloppage, which is 10, times your x plus y-intercept is 0. Bam. That's what they have. They just put a phantom 0 up in here. Again, with the tables, you may have used different values, but uh, these are the values that were given in the book. And again, notice this middle column in all of these. It's just where you could show your work if you want. But, uh, no, I don't think I'm even going to put that middle column in there for you. So.
Okay. Uh, this table shows the approximate height and horizontal distance traveled by a football kicked at an angle of 30 degrees with an initial velocity of 30 yards per second. Which is really nerdy talk, okay? Nerdy. And you'll hear it more when you take physics, maybe. Did the football travel the same height each half second? Well, let's find out. Right. So, uh, did it travel? We're just looking at height. Okay, so, we're just looking at height. And so from 0 to 6.2, it went up 6.2, okay? And from 6.2 to 9.7, it looks like it went up uh, 3.5. Well, those are different, so, and this... Did you cross out height or underlined? It's different. I underlined it, because that's the one we're trying to find. See, and this one was a half second. And this one was also a half second. So if we made these ratios, the first one you'd have 6.2 over 0.5. And it is not the same as 3.5 over 0.5. Okay? So this one, did the football travel the same height each half second? No, it does not. Justify your answer. All right, C work. Done. Did the football travel the same length each half second? Well, let's find out. So, let's uh, zoom in up in here. Well, from 0 to 13, it went up 13, okay. And by the way, all of these are going up half second, right? So, since these are consistent, the length, the increase in length should also be the same, okay? So, let's look. From 13 to 26, plus 13. 26 to 39, 13. 39 to 52, 13. 52 to 65, 13, okay? So, did this one, did it travel the same length every half second? Yeah, it did, right? So, yeah, right? So this one is yes. Justify your answer, C work. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really care if you guys write a sentence out of this stuff. Uh, you could say, as long as you show your work. Because we did show work, okay? Justifying your answer is showing your work. Caden? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, graph the ordered pairs and on separate grids. Connect the points with a straight line or smooth curve. Then compare the graphs. Very good. Let's start with, notice this one is in height. So we're going to be using this column. So it starts at 0, 0. Okay. And it's going to go up to 6.2 for the next one, which is going to be right about here. And then 1 and 9.7 would be right about a here. And then 1.5 and 10.5 would be right about here. 2 and 8.7 is uh, maybe right about here. 2.5 and, and 4.2 is right about here. Okay. So connect the points with a straight line or smooth curve. Bam. That's smooth. All right, let's graph the next one. So again, this is length, so we're using the length column. So at zero, it did not travel any distance. And at half, it went up to 13, maybe right about here. And at one, it went up to 26. One and a half, now you're at 39er. 39, right about here. And at two, you're at 52, right about here. Yeah, and two and a half you're gonna be up at sixty-five. Okay. Uh, this one looks like it's going to be nice straight lineage. So once again, you before you're justifying your answers, you can write a whole paragraph if you want. It's lots of fun. Okay. All right, here's another example. So I'm gonna read this first. 
Recall that the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 times pi times its radius. And that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the square of the radius. Complete the table showing the circumference and area of circles with radius r. Okay. Well, uh, we don't uh, use 3.14 as pi. Okay. Because on these calculators, if you go three buttons down from the turquoise button, you'll find the pi button. Okay. So... The second one will be 2 pi, which is 6.28. I'm going to make this a 6.28. Okay. And we got 3 pi, is 9 point... Oh, well, that's circumference, actually. Hold on. Yeah, so, uh, this one is a 2 times pi times the radius. Okay, so... 2 pi times the radius, which is 2, that's going to give us 12.57. And the next one is uh, 2 pi <coughs> times 3, 18.85, and we're just going to repeat this, okay? Uh, fill them in, all right? So these are your circumferences. Well, let's do the areas now. So it's just pi times the radius squared. So this first one is going to be pi times 2 squared, which is 12.57. Okay, and then we'll do pi times 3 squared, which is 28.27, and repeat. So now that we've completed this table, we just need a graph. Graph the ordered pairs, radius and circumference, and radius area for each function on the same coordinate plane, okay? So notice radius is on the left, so that must be our x. It's independent. And if you think about this, it makes sense, okay? The circumference will depend on whatever the radius is. Same with the area. It's going to depend on what the radius is. Here on the left, we're going to be dealing with uh, circumference. And then uh, in a different color, we'll do area, okay? So for circumference, uh, yeah, for one, you'd have 6.28, something like that, right here. Yeah. And for two, you got 12.57, right about here. And for three, you got 18.85, right about here. And four is 25. One, one, three. Now you should label these, but uh, writing on this is very hard, so you're going to have to do it on your own. 5 and 31.42 or something like that. Okay. All right, about, yeah. All right, so that gives us this line. Okay. Let's do the area now. So our first one is uh, right here. Second one is right here. Third is up to 28, and the fourth is up to 50.27, and five is 78.4, somewhere up in here, okay? So this one's going to be nice, smooth curve. There we go. Okay, well, uh, is the area linear? Is it linear? For the graph of area, is it linear? No, it is not, okay, because it, it's a curve. It's a curve. What about the circumference? Yeah, it's linear. It's linear. Okay, good. Nonlinear functions, it just means that uh, your rate of change or your slope, m, change y divided by the change in x, all that good stuff, it's not going to be equal. If you make it a fraction, it's not equal, okay? If it is equal, then it's linear. So let's determine whether these tables are linear or nonlinear, all right? So 50 
Again, all I'm doing is comparing the change in y divided by the change in x. Okay, so this one I need three fractions. One, two, three. And if they're not equal, then uh, it's not linear. Okay, so this first change from 50 to 35 was down 15. Down, goes down. So down 15. Two to four is up two. Alright, 35 to 20 is down 15, and from 4 to 6 is up 2, 20 to 5 is down 15, and is up 2, down 15, and from 6 to 8 is up 2. Are all of these fractions equal? Negative 15 over 2? Yes. Yeah, it is. Good. Yep. So this one would be linear. Let's look at the next example. So again, I need to compare these as fractions and see if they be equal. 1 to 16 went up 15. 1 to 4 went up 3. 16 to 49 er uh oh. What is that? A 3 and a 3. So it went up 33. 4 to 7, up 3. Are these equivalent fractions? No, they are not. So this one would be nonlinear. Questions? Is A linear or not linear? Linear. It is linear. What is the rate of change? Five over negative four. Okay, yeah, five over negative four. Very good. Well, as it turns out, it does need to be the change in y divided by the change in x, okay? So this one it would actually be, yeah, negative 4 over 5, okay? What about B, linear or not linear? Not linear. Or not linear, whatever. It's all the same. Okay. And you can see that these are changing by 2 each time, but these change by 2 and then 6, which would give you unequal fractions. All right, well, let's look. So after this week, it increased by 175. It's increased by 1, so you got 175 over 1. This increases by 185. This increases by 1. Are these equal? No. They're not equal. So is it linear? No. Very good. Non-linear. There you go. Is this linear or not linear? It is linear. Turns out this one is also proportional. Okay. So plus 5 and plus 1. Just remember, x's are always on bottom, y's are on top with the tables. So when you write your rate of change, it'd be 5 over 1, and then 5 over 1. So they are equal. So it is linear. All right, if we look at this graph, is that linear? No. No, it is not. Good. Okay, so you guys just saw that the area is not linear, but what about the side lengths? Well, let's make a table of these, and then we'll figure it out, okay? So the perimeter is going to be dependent on your side lengths, okay? So if I have a side length of one, what's my perimeter? Well, you just add each side together. It's a square, they're all the same side length. One plus one plus one plus one, four. What if each side length is two? Well, then what's your perimeter? Two plus two plus two plus two, eight. What if your side length is three, then what's the perimeter? 12. Is this linear? Oh, yeah, right? You got plus 4 here, plus 1, gives you 4 over 1. Is that equal to plus 4 plus 1? Yes, it is. So this is linear. All right, before we move on with those other problems, uh, let's look here. So. There's a few different ways you can tell for nonlinearity, okay? <laughs> 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 
And you gotta you gotta recognize these on all three types of uh, representations of uh, relationships. Okay. So when you look at a table, all you're gonna do is find the rate of change. The rate of change will be will not be uh, equivalent fractions. That's how you will tell with the table. With the graph, uh, all you got to do is look at the line. It's just not a straight line, okay? And finally, with the equation, what you're going to look for is, well, since these are functions, uh, it'll be a function of x, so you got to look at your variable x, okay? If it's anything other than x, then it's not linear. What I mean by that is if you've got a, some type of exponent that goes with it, like 2, then it's not linear. Okay? Or if you find that x is in the denominator, maybe it's 10 over x. Okay? That is not linear. Okay? And that wouldn't matter if that had some type of exponent there. It's still not linear. All right? Well, maybe maybe you've got uh, 3x to the 4th. Still doesn't matter. Also, the exponents can be fractions, which you guys will learn about eventually. Uh, if it's a fraction, no. Then it's, um, all we got to do is figure out if it's linear or not. Well, then it's not linear. Okay? Emily is downloading photos from her digital camera to her computer. The table shows the percent of photos downloaded for several seconds. During which period of time did the percent downloaded not change? Well, we just need to figure out where the time, where the percent is the same. So there, they're the same, and right here. Yes. Okay, so it was from four to six seconds, and from eight to ten seconds. During which period of time did the percent downloaded change the most? Well, let's figure out the changes. So that's 15 right here. There's 15. 64 to 82. And 10, 18. So that's a bigger one than 15. And then this final one is 18 as well. So uh, from 10 to 12 seconds and... From 12 to 14 seconds, change the most. Oh, actually, it looks like it's from 6 to 8. That's 34. So scratch these buggers. There you go. So it looks like it was from 6 to 8 a seconds. Let's graph and connect the ordered pairs. Well, that's a very good. So at two seconds, is it a 15? And four, is it a 30? Six is at 30. Eight is at 64. 10 is at 64. 12 is at 82. And 14 is at 100. Well, let's connect the points then. So it's uh, like a these. There we go. Is that linear? No. Oh, wait. That is not linear. It's not linear. Okay. But uh, notice with the graph also, it's not finished because we have to label the x i. So does time or percent downloaded represent the x axis? Time, very good. Time is always the x-axis. So this is time in seconds. And this is the percent download. Qualitative graphs are going to look like this, but they're going to give you a situation and you've got to kind of make your own graph. Or they'll give you a graph and they'll say, describe a situation when this could happen. Okay, so let's look at some examples. All right, so we've got this equation, and then we'll, we'll do the second one, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is make a table for this one. So I've got my table. It's ready to rock and roll. 
And I've got my x's on the left, f of x on the right, or y in this case. So if x is 0, 1, 2, and 3, then I should be able to graph this. So I've got 2 times the x, which is 0, plus 3 is 3. That's my first coordinate pair, 0, 3. That's actually my y-intercept. That's very nice. Uh, now I can't use the slope on this one because it's not actually slope because it's not linear. So I've got to use the table. So 2 times 1 squared is 2, plus 3 is 5. So 1 and 5 is right here. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, these are more examples that you'll see on the homework. Okay. All right. So let's look at this first graph. A graph of Ms. Fraser's electric bill throughout the year shown below describe the change in the bill over time. Well, it, in this, you've got to consider how much time has passed. Well, it doesn't tell us, all right? So when we describe the change in the bill over time, it may be, con it may be good for you guys to consider what season this is, okay? So the electric bill. What kind of things do you run on your electric bill? Flashlight, or, no. <laughs> well, some air conditioning units run off of electrical bill, uh, electricity. Lights. Lights, these kinds of things, okay? So, okay, so what, the, what I mean by this is, and we can point to this, right? What season would it be, would your electrical bill be low? Summer. Yeah, probably the summer, okay? No, it's no, it's the winter because no. Yeah, you'd use more gas. But now, let's let's consider lights then, okay? In the summer, are you gonna use your lights more? No. No, because no, because there's light longer, so you don't have your lights on. You're probably using less electricity, okay? Uh, so what season would this be? That may be winter, okay? Because your lights are on more, and I don't know. Maybe, well, if you have an electric heater, then uh, you're using more electricity that way as well. Okay. So there you go. So describe the change of the bill over time. You'd say, well, it increases. Then it decreased. And then it increased. Right here in this area, it decreased quickly and then it kind of leveled out before it started to increase again. Okay? So this graph represents the distance covered on a long road trip. Describe the change in the distance over time. Well, uh, you can see that it increases uh, steadily, so it's an increase steadily. But then it levels out, okay? So since they're taking a trip, if it levels out, what does that mean? They're stopping. They stop. Good. So then they stopped. Okay, so then it increased quickly. So it increased. All right, so we've covered this first part. It went level, then we covered this. Well, then it levels again, so they stopped. All right, so we covered this one, and then it goes on to increase, okay? So, and that's a, that's pretty level, They're steady, so, so then it increased steadily. Okay, so this would be the description, and notice this one had five parts, and that's fine, because, you know, the first part, the level, three, four, and then five, so it increases. So notice on this one, uh, it's a little bit more detailed, but really we're just concerned with increasing and decreasing, which they also put in these, increases, decreases, graph shows the car traveling, it's constant speed, stops, goes faster, stops, and then continues. All right, this is the nice thing about uh, qualitative graphs. 
is that what do you not see on these graphs? Oh, there's, yeah, Nazis. Uh, say that again, Grant. Numbers. numbers. There are no numbers on qualitative graphs because it's qualitative. So it's more about the quality of the graph, not the quantity. Okay, so we don't know, for example, this percent downloaded thing. It, it doesn't tell us what percent that is or this one. So right here, we don't, we don't know these values. But intuitively, we should be able to look at these and determine what is happening. Okay, so this graph shows the, it shows the level in a bathtub, the water level, okay? Uh, changing over time. So you can see here that it increases, which it says there's no change, and then it decreases. Okay, so what happened in this? So Chris says that... Okay, so like Christian said with this, is the water levels increasing so it's likely they're filling it up they turned it off and then they drain the tub right there's many other situations that that qualify for this okay for example maybe they filled it up all the way as high as it could possibly go and then they just kept the water running so it's pouring out of the tub and then well not norm not many normal people would right but yeah, it would look like that, right? Yeah, they fill it up all the way to the top. Yeah, so then they turned it off right here, and they unplugged it, okay? All right. So for the temperature, when is the temperature lowest in the day? Do you guys know? Oh, I know, in the, in the midnight. It's right before the sun comes up. It's midnight. Uh, you were wrong. You thought wrong. Okay. So, notice it steadily increases until it's the hottest time of day, then it decreases until nighttime. So, you would have daytime and then nighttime in most situations. Okay. So, in this one, we can look and we can see sales were doing pretty good. Then, people not only were people not selling at this point, but they were spending probably. Okay. So, uh, then, then sales went up. Maybe they spend this on marketing, whatever. Okay, and then it levels out a little bit, and then it increases. So that would be your description. You also have to sketch them. So not only do you have to look at them and be able to describe them, but now you got to sketch them as well. So a car is traveling at a constant speed. The car slows down steadily to come to a rest at a stoplight. Sketch a qualitative graph to represent the situation. Okay. So for this one, you're going to need your graph. That's great. I'll try to make yours look better. All right. This is X. That's Y. Uh, so what, what two quantities are we comparing? Well, it's speed. So let's compare uh, uh, distance and time. You can do speed and time as well. I suppose it doesn't matter. So... Let's try that speed. And time is always the x axis, so this is time. Wait, you said time is always. Oh, yeah, I never Yeah, I did. So the car travels at a constant speed. So its speed, it's constant. It slows down to come to rest at a stoplight. So it's slowing down and then it stops. Oh, I can see it. All right, so there's your graph for this. Um, if you had done this slightly differently, so let's say that you would wanted to use distance and time, it would look like this, okay? Label this. This would be, instead of speed, you're going to use distance. So the distance, you're going to, it travels at a constant speed. So it's going to travel at a constant speed. It's gonna, and then it's uh, going to uh, come to rest at a stoplight, so it's rest, and then it stops, okay? So this is the one that the book used. They use speed and time on this one.